my name is Maria, otherwise known as the Gin Junkie, and welcome to my channel. I am going to endeavour in 2018 to do 52 weeks of gin. Now, sometimes I'm going to be lucky enough to have some at my in, in my home, in my bar, at my own disposal, and sometimes I might have to do it at a gin festival, or sometimes I might visit a bar and try a gin that I've not tried before. So still thinking through how i'm going to do it but that's kind of the rough plan that i have for now much to my husband's disgust as we work out our budget for the year there's something to be said about a man that doesn't like gin the gin that i have chosen to talk about today is one that i discovered last year at the gin festival at victoria baths like let's just pretend that i'm some great gin connoisseur and judge just for a moment and i was asked to choose a gin festival then this would be it cuckoo cuckoo gin now for me i think i've said before that I could easily fall in love with a gin because of its story and this one's got a great story these guys have a farm in Lancashire this is their signature gin they also have a spice gin as well and what I love about these guys is that in a in a day and age where we have such a throwaway takeaway uh, society they work pretty pretty hard to make everything as eco-friendly and sustainable and ethically sourced as they can and the still uses an artisan spring that's on their property i do believe they grow their own crops from from what i can recall and what else can i remember ah i was also reading that the byproducts of what they use in distilling the gin as well is also fed to animals on the property so you can't really get much better than that can you in terms of trying to do right by the environment which you live the farming in which you do and then further into the world around us to source that which is ethically produced is just fabulous in this day and age and so not only does it taste fantastic but it has a great story to it as well the other thing that really gets me you know just here when when thinking about a gin is one that has a bit of a story a bit of a folklore attached to it it's a northwest gin it's from brindle in lancashire so the folklore behind the name cuckoo gin starts in brindle the belief was that the cuckoo would herald in the start of spring and hopefully with it bring great farming great produce a wonderful harvest and uh, great things for the townsfolk and and actually the day that it was heard i believe that they gave the workers a day off in order to celebrate before all the hard work began another little plot twist with this story was the villagers wanted so much to make sure that their destiny and their future was secure that they tried to build or they did build a wall around the field where the cuckoo was said to said to come unfortunately they didn't manage to capture the the cuckoo but it was rumored that had they built it just two stones higher then they would have ca indeed captured the cuckoo and perhaps their future destiny and fate would have been secured and uh, smothered in positivity I don't know I don't know but you know this is this is what they say in keeping with the traditions of the area they've named their gin cuckoo gin which is just lovely it's a gorgeous bottle I don't know whether you can see it's doing it justice but it really is a beautiful bottle as well it's a beautiful story and a, and a really great ethical concept behind the product now what is this infused with oh <laughs> obviously we have our juniper we have coriander one of my favorites is grapefruit peel, orange peel, oats, almonds. Oh, yum, I love some almonds. <laughs> we also have cardamom, chamomile, and cinnamon. So there, that's a bit of a mouthful there. <laughs> the cardamom, chamomile, thimmin. Thimmin, 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 it's a thimmin. I don't know whether I mentioned it in this video, but this was actually a gift from one of my sons at Christmas time. Uh, so yeah, it was really meaningful. I'll just show you the batch number before I open it. There we go. It's nice that it's October because his birthday is in October. So makes a nice little added bit of extra. Oh, well, here we go, another squeaky bottle. All the good gin seems have squeaky lids. <laughs> hmm. I know that they claim for it to uh, have quite a sweet and piney start with a peppery finish. And interestingly, when you open the bottle, that, that is what you, smells piney and sweet, but also peppery as well, so, which is really lovely. 
I think I will move over into my kitchen area now and uh, yeah, we'll um, probably only do one today because I'm expecting my husband and my son home at any minute so I'm going to run out of time to get this done but uh, we might do one, one garnish and uh, have a chat about how it tastes. So as suggested, I've got a coca glass chilling just while I get the garnishes ready. The website suggested orange and ginger, but I don't have an orange in, but I do have red grapefruit. I'm going to slice off my, my grapefruit. And then the other thing that it suggested to try it with was some fresh ginger. So we'll get some slithers of ginger on the go and we'll give that a try as well. Be really interested to know what gins you've been having this week or this month. And if you've got one that I should try, I'd really love to know that as well. The Gin Society will have another festival here in Manchester, probably February, March. So it'd be great to have your suggestions of things to try there. And no doubt the ginfestival.com company will also have a festival. Oh, it's usually sort of March, April, I think as well. Could be wrong, but I know it's somewhere around my birthday and I have an April birthday. <laughs> So I'll get rid of this because this one is has really just been there to cool the glass and get some fresh stuff. I love, love, love a dirty ice machine. <laughs> As someone who really does enjoy the Spanish style of gin, this is like just been a godsend in my life. <laughs> the ice can be a godsend. <laughs> so we've got our grapefruit. Nice healthy chunk there. I don't know if I've put too much in or not enough. A little bit, might do a little bit more ginger. So again, this is an, another another lovely seasonal gin in that it, it conjures up that feeling of firesides and ginger is warming, grapefruit, orange, all of those things are very seasonal, aren't they? So other than perhaps a Christmas gin, that is made so for instance like sacred spirit christmas pudding gin or something like that where you know it, it is for christmas or the edinburgh gin, christmas gin that i tried last week generally i don't really have gins that i only drink particular times of year what i try to do is if i love a gin and i fancy it at in summer then i try and find a way to garnish it that that goes with the flavors and the feeling of summer as well for today's purposes, Cuckoo Gin does have that fireside feeling to it. Life's too short to measure gins. There we go, that's a nice healthy size, isn't it? Thankfully I'm not going anywhere this evening. <laughs> so I can start early. I was going to taste it first. While I wait for those garnishes to infuse with the botanicals and make that scrum diddly umptious, I thought that I would try it on the rocks first. Mmm, it really does have a lovely smell. The nail on the head there actually it is a sweet start and it is quite piney really does go to that warm peppery flavor mm. do you like to swish it around your taste buds because botanicals are really complex in gin i find that i need to do that and really experience it oh nice if i was doing this again i would make sure i did it with orange but for now, the grapefruit has been really lovely. And I'm going to go and light the fire because I've just heard the front door open and I'm going to kick back and I'm going to enjoy my gin. So leave me suggestions for other gins to try. Tell me what you've been drinking and uh, I'll say chin chin.